Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into our latest Opinion Poll Tracker video here at the Gavin Partridge YouTube channel. So every month we release a Opinion Poll Tracker video, charting the way opinion is changing leading up to the next UK general election. This is the final Opinion Poll Tracker video of 2023 and the final Opinion Poll Tracker video before we enter into election year, probably. Because of course the general election could be held as late as January 2025, but realistically, I think most people's expectation, expectations is that the election will be at some point through 2024, whether that's the spring, the summer or the autumn. And so, yes, this is the last video before we enter into what is uh, very, very likely to be our election year of 2024. And I shall get home with it for you in a second, just say that if you enjoy the content on the channel at the moment, please you'd like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. So we're going to have a look at the prediction from, from election calculus for the next UK general election and then we'll have a look at the opinion polls that, that prediction is based upon we'll be looking at government approval as well so sit back relax and enjoy and we're going to do this so the first thing to do is go to electoral calculus and have a look at their latest prediction so in five four three two one here we go and the current prediction for uh, from electoral calculus for December 2023, based on the opinion polls conducted during November 2023, is for a Labour record landslide majority of 268 seats. That is 32 up on last month's prediction, on November's prediction, based upon the opinion polls conducted during um October. So it's been a further slight swing from Conservative to Labour in uh, in the past month. So uh, let's quickly go through the prediction. Pretty grim time still for Conservatives. Let's go through the uh, prediction then. So, uh, of course, we've got our party columns uh, just here. Conservative, Labour, Liberal Democrats, Reform, etc, etc, etc. And we've got 2019 votes and seats just here. And then we've got the predicted columns, whoops, predicted columns just here. So, uh, the Conservatives are predicted to have 24.6% uh, of vote on the central prediction. So, round that up 25% of the vote. Which would be an absolutely catastrophic result for the Conservatives. I don't think they've ever fallen below 30% in a national uh, general election. Gives them a central prediction of a absolutely horrendous, for them, 120 seats virtual oblivion, really. And way under what they did, even in their catastrophic result in 1997, again, 2001. I think they went down to about 170 to 180 seats. So that would be the lowest ever uh, vote, uh, seat, uh, vote um, uh, seat share for the Conservatives on record. There is a margin of error within this prediction, of course, but the low end they could go down as low as 32 seats. That really is wipeout. At the high end, they could hold on to 235. I think given the way that the polls have been looking over the past uh, year or so, they would be pretty happy, <laughs> probably, if they came away uh, at the end of the election with 235 seats. Labour have a central prediction of 459, a huge uh, uh, seat score there, way above, for example, the 365 that the Conservatives got in their uh, big uh, election winning uh, 2019. Again, the margin of error has been potentially as low as 342 or as high as 539. Um, even at their lowest end, 342, they still have a majority. They're still above the all-important 326. They need for a majority of one. Liberal Democrats, and that's on 44% of the vote, by the way. Liberal Democrats on 10.9% of the vote. Um, that gives them a central prediction of 31 seats at the low end. They could be as low as 15. At the high end, they could be as high as 56. Again, of note is that the Liberal Democrat score at 10.9 is actually a little bit under what they got in 2019, 11.8, when they only got 11 seats. So it implies that there is a large amount of tactical voting that is likely to take place at the next section. That is where... Uh, Labour voters vote tactically for Liberal Democrats in Conservative Liberal Democrat seats to either keep the Conservative out or to um, to uh, to see a switch from Conservative to Liberal Democrat for the uh, MP there. Uh, reform are expected to be on 
uh, 3% of the vote, which gives them a central prediction of no seats. At the high end, they might get three, and at the low end, again, no seats. Greens are on a central prediction of 6.4% of the vote, with one seat at the, uh, at the high end, they could be as high as two, at the low end, they hang on to their one seat. SNP, with a central projection, uh, projection 3.2%, gives them a central seat score of just 17. That's way down on what they got in 2019. At the high end, they could hang on to 37. At the low end, they could go down to five, which really would be a terrible result for the SNP. And then Plyde, on a central prediction of 0.8% of the vote, could give them a central prediction of four seats, at the high end six, at the low end down to three seats. As I said in the last video, you have to question a little bit about how high we've got reform and greens here. Currently, they are polling, um, you know, 6.4, 8.3, or they were last month. Uh, I imagine the reform um, uh, 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 percentages like to go up even more after... Um, Mr. Farage's um, foray into the jungle just recently. But at, at, an, at an actual election, uh, opinion does tend to shift more toward the main parties. So you'll probably take some of the uh, Green score away and give it to Labour. You'll probably take some of the Reform score away and give it to Conservatives. In the end, they probably will uh, cancel each other out a little bit. But in any case, the Central Prediction has uh, Labour on a record landslide majority of 268 seats, which uh, will be higher than any sort of majority that we've seen in anybody's lifetimes, I think. Um, so these are the opinion polls that that is based upon, that prediction is based upon. We've got all of them here from Wikipedia right the way in the first, which was more in common. Uh, down here from 28th of October, 2nd of November, that gave Labour a 16% lead, all the way up to the final poll, which was Techni. And uh, that was the 29th to 30th of November, that gave Labour a 22% lead. We do see some absolutely enormous leads within some of these uh, polls. So we've got Find Out Now here, uh, which actually took the Conservatives, it conducted on the 13th, 14th November, actually took the Conservatives down to just 19% of the vote, under 20%. Uh, which, and, gave, and Labour on 46% of vote, that gave... Um, Labour a 27% lead, but um, even worse from the uh, Conservative point of view, even better the Labour point of view was people polling conducted on the 14th of November, which actually gave Labour a 30% 30, 30 lead, uh, Labour 49%. Conservatives 19%. So a few of the polls, few of the polls in November did actually have the Conservatives going under 20%. They are outliers. Most of the polls did keep um, Conservatives into the 20% mark. Uh, Labour in the 14% mark. So uh, other notable leads. We've got this one, we think, uh, gave Labour a 24% lead. 24% Conservative, 48% to uh, Labour. We also have YouGov here, one of the older uh, pollsters. Now they uh, had Labour on 23%, or with a lead of 23%, Labour on 45% of votes. So it's just 22% of a vote with YouGov. They're, you know, they're one of the more reliable pollsters uh, as well. 25% of a vote with Techni here. Um, Conservatives on just 21%, Labour on 46%. These are really catastrophic numbers, you have to say, for, um, for, for, for the Conservatives to be anywhere close to 20%, really, is absolutely dreadful. Um, not all of them were as bad as that, so we've got more in common here from the 15th, 17th of uh, November, and that was a little bit better for the Conservatives, but still a substantial Labour lead, 13%. 13% Labour lead uh, with that one, 27% Conservative, 40% to uh, Labour as well. We've got Ipsos, uh, formerly Murray, of course, or Ipsos Murray, just here from the 1st to the 8th of November. They found uh, Labour with a 21% lead. They are our, our oldest uh, pollster, by the way. They have data going all the way back into the 1970s. So they had uh, the Conservatives on 25%, Labour on 46% of the vote and uh, a couple more so opinion which tends to have slightly or has tended to have slightly uh, smaller labor lead they uh, 
conducted a poll from 22 to 24 of November, and they had Labour on a very, very solid 16% of the vote, 42% to Labour, 26% to the Conservatives. Savanta, again, they're tending to have slightly uh, lower Labour leads, uh, formerly Comres, so um, they had an 18% lead for Labour, in November, 44% to Labour, 26% to the Conservatives. Delta poll also often tend to have slightly lower Labour leads, but they had Labour on 14%, although very, very solid, 42% to Labour, 28% to the Conservatives. I would suggest those sort of leads are more likely, you know, as we're heading towards the general election. I've talked about swing back before. We do tend to get swing back to the uh, governing party of the closing months of the Parliament. So I would expect as we go through the first two or three months of um of 2024 we will probably find these huge labor leads like so 25 percent and uh 30 percent 27 percent um i expect we'll probably find quite a lot of those sort of fading out and the uh labor lead will gradually drift down into the teens i would have thought as we go through the um first two or three months of 2024 and then as we go into the election probably narrowing further but as i say still not enough i doubt to prevent a labor government um this is why so this is how the overall opinion poll uh, graph is looking down at wikipedia and the reason that i suspect despite the there probably will be swing back from the opposition to the government in the closing months of Parliament that there usually is, is that the lead just got so large. So if the Conservatives have managed to maintain the lead, uh, or managed to um, contain the Labour lead where it was back in 2021-2022 uh, until uh, Boris Johnson dropped off and Liz Truss came in, when Labour had around 10-12% uh, sort of lead in the opinion parts. If they'd been able to do that, then they would have had something to work with going in to the closing months of the Parliament and possibly could have narrowed things down. Uh, enough so that they, they were in play. But you see clearly what happened in the autumn of 2022. The Labour lead soars off into the stratosphere. The Conservative uh, Conservative crater down into the, the depths and this enormous lead opens up. And whilst that did narrow a little bit after Rishi replaced Liz and we can see that the Conservative uh, trend line did come up a little bit and the Labour trend line did come down a little bit, despite that, still a very large gap, much larger than it was through the uh, second half of 2021 and the first half of 2022. So, although, yes, we can see probably we are beginning to swing back already. You see the Labour trend line is uh, is dropping from uh, where it was sort of October time to, uh, this takes into December, actually. So this will be more uh, of a feature in next month's video when we look at December's opinion poll. But you can see from that the Labour trend line is dropping a little bit. Conservative trend line has ticked up slightly, but it's still not really doing anything in particular. Um, but I would suspect as we go through the first... A few months of 2024, we'll probably see the Conservative trend line coming up a bit. We'll probably see the Labour trend line going down a little bit. But despite that, I expect the gap is so large between the Conservatives and Labour that there will not be anything other than... Um, uh, a Labour victory at the next election. That might be a hung parliament with Labour the largest party, or it might be an outright Labour majority, probably most likely to be an outright Labour majority, I would have thought. Um, maybe even a landslide, who knows? Have to wait and see how the polls are looking as we go into the uh, election. But yes, still a very, very large lead for uh, Labour there within the opinion polls. And the government still mired in unpopularity. Um, so finally, this from you, Gov. This is their government approval, disapproval tracker. And uh, you can see that the, the um, government remains extremely unpopular. So 69% uh, now have an un, uh, uh, disapproval, have an unfavorable, unfavorable view of the government. They disapprove of the government. Just 13% approve of the government. 19% don't know. So still we see the amount of people approving of the government underneath the don't knows. Always a very bad sign when that happens. You can see that uh, the only other time that the uh, government has been this unpopular 
Um, the only time really was back at uh, late 2018 into 2019, um, you know, with all Brexit disarray and whatnot in the dying days of Theresa May's government. It did come back up quite quickly, it has to be said, government approval, that's as Boris Johnson took over and, and we have the uh, election into the uh, autumn and early winter of, of uh, 2019. But I doubt that is likely to, um, I doubt history is likely to repeat itself there. I would suspect again we probably will see government approval rising above the don't knows of ventures. We're going to the election campaign. Um, government disapproval will probably come down a little bit. But I think, again, the gap is too large between uh, the amount of people disapproving of the government against the people that approve of the government for anything other than um, the government being replaced. This very, very much looks like a change election that we've got coming. Um, and barring, barring something very unexpected, it looks like we are heading towards a change of government in 2024. So, coming back to electoral calculus, this is their uh, prediction uh, for November 2023, or for December 2023, based on November's opinion polls. 2023, a Labour majority of 268 seats, a landslide for Labour and Conservatives in deep, deep trouble. Right, so that's it for uh, the tracking videos for 2023. We'll have another one for you. In uh, January, and of course, in January, we'll be looking at December's opinion polls, and we'll have that uh, uh, the, that uh, prediction from electoral calculus for uh, for January for you next month. There'll probably be another video, maybe sometime over Christmas, looking at the uh, Ipsos probably Murray, um, uh, approval and disapproval and personal ratings and uh, whatnot for uh, for Rishi and, and uh, for Keir Sama as well and, and drilling down into some of the uh, some of the opinions that the uh, public has about both the party leaders and, and parties themselves and uh, also, um, you know, various topics and, and subjects as well. So that could be coming up later on uh, towards uh, the end of the month. But for this month, and this year's opinion poll tracker videos that's all for now thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you in uh, 2024 in the election year so we'll see you then bye for now